Welcome on board Take It Easy. I'm Cecile and this is Jan and together we are traveling through life on our catamaran. We are currently in Rajampat, Indonesia, also known as the most biodiverse region on the planet. We've seen a lot already and yet today we found a place to explore completely different from anything else we've seen so far. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and drop us a like. Last week, we did something crazy and went across Kabwe Passage, a shallow and narrow stream of water with a lot of current. It allowed us to come back to Free Wind without a massive detour. We were all alone when we arrived, but within a couple of hours, two other boats joined us and, unfortunately, one of them dropped anchor way too close to us. Right, so we are back in free wind. So essentially we need to go back to Sorong to extend our visas and because nothing's happening on the weekend, so we thought we'd come here to wait. We anchored same as last time, it was really good, but uh, now we're having to move because um, somebody anchored really, really, really close to us. So now the tide is changing and we are obviously not moving at the same time. We end up like pretty close to them, like probably, I don't know, I'd say 10 meters away from their boat. It's too scary and they're not on board to see that. Probably when they're gonna come back, they're gonna think like, oh, no problem. So it's gonna be difficult to get them to move. So we're moving, life on a boat. It wasn't as easy as just re-anchoring. Indeed, we had to maneuver a bit, which meant reversing and the dinghy wasn't hoisted up. Well, that was a painful moment, uh, to say the least. In essence, those guys unfortunately anchored a bit too close to us. I don't know why, to be honest, because there was two boats here yesterday night and so much space and they decided to anchor in between the two boats. Sometimes I find, especially in foreign countries, people find some sort of relief or security in being close to the group, which I kind of understand. But then uh, here you have to think, you know, you're putting out 80 meters of chain. We need a lot of space between boats. It's, it happens, what can I say? They were a bit too close and they left for a snorkel. And when the tide changed, obviously we started turning before them because we don't have much kill and we are very light compared to other boats. So we we are not affected by wind and current same as the others so we tend to move a lot more and we tend to move sooner than the others we ended up turning before they did so we were back against back and we ended up probably about 10 meters away from one another we had to move very quickly in the process we got the line of the dinghy stuck in our propeller thankfully nothing broke we only had to cut the line unfortunately but that's just the line and yeah we re-anchored a bit further away from them but not very pleasant experience Let's hope we are far enough from everybody now and nobody is coming too close to us. Keep your distance, people. In the process of freeing the line stuck in the propeller, I obviously got stung by a jellyfish. Why is it always me? Oh yeah, with two days to waste, let's go for another dive, shall we? The dive kicked off with those familiar yellowtail angelfish we often spot around here. Then, get ready for a new deep branch marathon today. First up, the yellow spotted flatworm, tiny compared to its neighbors, a double saddle butterfly fish and a puffer fish. Oh, and check out the bicolor angelfish before we bump into another nudie branch, the Vaikos filidia. They're quite abundant around here, but this one's a bit of a giant at 15 centimeters. And here's its cousin at a more standard 10 centimeter size. Can you believe how many of these guys we've seen today? Certain's a charm with this species. And last in our midi branch roundup for today, the story dealer, which we are seeing for the first time. This one is a 3 cm standout, which is on the larger side, making them super tough to spot. And look at its body, probably half the size of the first one.
Now, onto something seriously cool, a leaf scorpion fish. With their sneaky camo and leafy look, they usually fly under the radar, so it's pretty epic to spot one. Speaking of hard to spot pals, say hello to the octopus. They are masters of disguise, blending in seamlessly with the rocks they perch on, making them next to impossible to spot. But lucky for us, this one hesitated before darting into a hiding spot, and even though we hang around, it didn't pick out again. Then there's this funky bubble coral that looks a bit like blood cells, and last but not least, something that's not super rare around here, but a big deal for us, a warbogong shark. These guys are always playing hide and seek, so it's a real treat to get such a good view. As the current starts picking up, and we don't really know how much further we can go on this reef, we are wrapping up our underwater adventure. So after a safety stop, we decide it's time to resurface. After this quick stop, we headed to Sorong for a visa extension, and let me tell you, it's no walk in the park. With the country reopening after Covid, the rules are in constant flux. Keeping up? It's tough. Let me break it down. The most crucial bit, you can't extend this visa, the B211A, without an agent. That means you need a sponsor letter, which only an agent can hook you up with. And here's the kicker, you've got to stick with the same agent who handled your visa the first time, and the officials want the original letter. So for us, it meant reaching out to our Bali-based agent to sort out the letter and mail it, which, you guessed it, can't be done overnight. Once the Sorong Immigration Office gets hold of the letter, you've got to show up there, hand in your passport, and go through the whole biometrics deal. Picture time and fingerprinting. They hold your passport for a solid four days while they sort everything out. A necessarily painful process, but hey, at least it's done and we've backed an extra two months. Now let's get back into Raja Ampat. First up, Patenta. But this time, we're aiming for an anchorage in the middle, apparently a must-see. Look at my surroundings. There's nobody around. All we can hear is the noise of the birds. It's just so lovely. We are here because we're gonna go check out a waterfall. I'm guessing since it's a waterfall, it's probably fresh water. So get a bath as well. That would be cool. Let's go check it out. All right, let's get to the waterfall. So it's a bit not scary, but uh, it's intriguing because there's a lot of noise. I think there's no habitation here, so yeah, definitely not. It's untouched. There's this pontoon that was probably built a while ago to get to the waterfall. But there's no one living here, so quite intriguing. It's also like very mangrovey, so I don't know if there's any crocodiles. Like most of the locals around here, they say there's no crocodiles here, but I mean, they said they've never seen any. Yeah, which I mean, is different. It's very different. Maybe the one who's seen one is dead, so <laughs> yeah. It's very, very different. I'm quite excited about this waterfall. We can take a shower maybe. I think it's like a 10 minutes walk. Let's enjoy the noise. The pontoon stopped. So <laughs> we are wearing flip flops. We're starting to hear the water falling, so the waterfall must be close. We made it and it's really loud. I don't know if you can hear anything I'm saying, but yeah, it's beautiful, but it's loud.
our water maker is not working properly, so we found our own water maker, which is the waterfall. And Cecil is just here feeding the tanks. And here I've got this bad boy and those two. Okay, we had a wonderful time here. Now it's time to go back and it won't be easy with all that water to carry. This guy literally went to the well and is bringing back water for the village. <laughs> Look at him. He's not the only one. I'm carrying about 20 liters in, on my back and probably about nine in this bag. And I think he's got 10 liters on his back and 20 liters in that big jerry can so yeah we're bringing about 60 liters of water <laughs> which is really nice how was the walk back not pleasant at all <sighs> that's heavy these mosquitoes i just washed myself and look i'm all dirty sweating great great all right now let's put it in the dinghy get home and yeah Let's rest. We had a very nice shower and we stocked up on fresh water. What more can we ask for? That brings us to the end of our day and the end of this episode. Still a bit of work for us with all this water to get back on board, but it's worth it, believe me. Next up, we'll be on our way to the equator. Yes, you heard me correctly. We'll be crossing to the North Hemisphere. Make sure not to miss this. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe and drop us a like and we'll see you next time. Bye.